Baseball fans, vast deaf friends, uh, welcome to the Cubs Fantasy Baseball stream. Cubs Fantasy stream. I call it something new every time. We've got one for you today, a game, as per usual, but as not per usual, two uh, people that used to be really, really good pitchers and might still be really, really good pitchers. You Darvish more likely to, to be really, really good. Madison Bumgarner is looking fantastic, though. Uh, I highly doubt he is going to have this sort of season uh, if baseball starts this year. Madison Bumgarner is 4-1 uh, with a 1.38 ERA. Darvish is also 4-1, and one, but with a ERA that's uh, darn near twice as big. So we'll get into that. This should be an interesting game. Uh, a lot of people, like I said, did not think Madison Bumgarner was going to be that good at the Diamondback Stadium, though, because um, he's pitched most of the time in San Francisco. Uh, but yeah, you Darvish looking, ooh, Javi's probably going to need a substitute. We'll go, oh gosh, Nico Horn. Oh, everyone's tired because yesterday was an 18 inning game. That's why. Oh boy, I don't know where to put half of these players. Uh, can Chris Bryant play shortstop? And everyone's tired too. It's one of those things where they're gonna be like, hey, do you wanna sub? And it's like, for who? Who's gonna sub where? Um, man, this is this is kind of tough. I don't know where to put a, a lot of people here. We'll see if it asks me to to sub other people out here. But now we got to figure out the lineup. Uh, aside from having Chris Bryant, hopefully they won't try and make me sub for him. Because like I said, everyone's kind of tired. So, oh, Madison Bumgarner's left-handed. That's not good for Schwarber. Especially Schwarber has been very bad. Let's see if there's anyone that has crazy power against left. Of course. Of course, when Baez is tired, is when we're facing a lefty where he's got huge power. Let's put him back in, I guess. I don't even know who play, who's playing second, but they probably won't be. Hernan Perez. Ugh. Yeah, whatever. We'll, let Hernan, we'll give Hernan Perez a start, as I don't think he's really been given much uh, for starting so, thus far this year. Gotta tell you, I'm not... <laughs> Not hap not huge, not huge on this. Ooh, I might also sub out Ian Hap for uh. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Javier Baez looks okay. So well, yeah, we're gonna replace Javier Baez with Nico Horner, but he also he doesn't look like he's. I'm making an executive decision. I'm going to start Javier Baez. It, he does not look that different. <laughs> and now it's saying Anthony Rizzo needs a day off. Uh, I guess Victor Caratini is going to go there where Rizzo was, at least since it's a left-hander. <sighs> but I am going to do this. I'm going to kind of front load. God, no one has great power against lefties here, really. Sorry, I usually don't take this long. Uh, this is, we'll see. I don't know, man. This is gonna be weird. It's gonna be very strange. Make sure the Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Coffee on me. So the Cubs versus the Diamondbacks. Both teams looking pretty good so far. Ooh, Diamondbacks jerseys sure are looking fucking ugly right now. They, aren't those the old ones? Those can't be the ones they use now. I thought they got rid of that. That. That color only really looks good on Prince, right? Uh, Madison Bumgarner, six starts, four and one. 
Look at that ERA. Spark. I would. I would dare to say that's one. You know. Although Walker Buehler might actually have had a better ERA right now. Looking fantastic. Looking pretty good. Chris Bryant. You may remember him from last game. Uh, leading off with a home run on the first or second pitch. It'd be fantastic if he could do that again right here, right now. Right now. Hey! That strike. Right now. Chris Bryant's all in one. Right now. Okay, here we go. We'll talk to my friend Trent here in a little bit. He's a musician. Funny, funny guy. Um, yeah, Chris Bryant about 320 on the year. And he pops it up to the catcher. He said, I really front-loaded. I know, I realize, I don't even know who I put as the cleanup guy. I think it was maybe Schwarber. That's under the presumption that they get rid of Madison Bumgarner at some point and have a right-handed pitcher come in, uh, but I really front-loaded it with, because Bias has huge power uh, against left-handed uh, pitchers. Uh, in fact, it told me to sit him. I'm concerned because I don't know if they usually perform poorly if they're like, hey, this person's tired, you should rest them. But so far, it might be like that. But, it, but if you looked at the people's energy levels from yesterday... There's, it was an 18 inning game. So 80% of the starters had energy levels where half the time I would have probably been sitting a lot of them. So we'll see. But yeah, I, I, uh, well, so far so bad for me, but so far so good for Madison Bumgarner and his ugly fucking. 1990s Diamondbacks jerseys that they're wearing. I really don't think they wear those anymore, right? They wear like a they they go more with the red maroonish thing than the purple, right? These look like like their 2001 World Series uh, jerseys. All right, Wilson Contreras batting 360 with 14 home runs, I believe, uh, and he might still lead the league in homers. He is certainly hitting quite well overall. I mean, I would say, uh, yeah, I, by far, I'd say he's been the most valuable player on the team. He's been hitting big hits, and it feels like they've Two came one. at big times. And, and like, except for the fact that maybe he just has so many hits where they're just by default going to happen at times that are good and beneficial. Hee-ha! Hee-ha! He's what the umpire is, refers to as two and two. Hee-ha! I can go for a hee-haw right now. You guys ever drink hee-haw? Oh, right up the middle. Wilson Contreras adding to that average. Up until recently, he was batting over 400. But I don't think anyone, you should expect anyone to, to keep it there. Madison Bumgarner tried to do a little do -si do spin move to backhand catch it. Madison Bumgarner, it's a, we'll talk to Trent about this. Uh, talk to Trent about this. The Madison Bumgarner, it's a sort of a, a not so well kept secret that he uh, moonlights as a rodeo guy. That's like a real thing. Uh, Madison Bumgarner famously got hurt on a dirt bike and like lost a season. Yet somehow the team still gave him his salary. I would not blame the team if fucking our best pitcher got hurt fucking dirt biking. Wow. Two strikeouts, one hit given. Here we go to the bottom of the first. Uh, Marte, Ahmed, and Marte are up. They have multiple Martes on the team. Starling, Mar Starling Marte, and then, uh, is it Ahmed? But that's gotta be confusing. Especially to have them batting that in the in the lineup that close together. Here comes you, Darvish. You's looked real good uh, this year for the most part. He at the end of the last half of last year was one of the best pitchers in baseball. 
He kind of flip-flopped his numbers. He was walking everybody the first half of baseball, and then his last half of baseball, he was just the opposite. Uh, Starling Marte. I was right about him. I forget. Or no, Ketel Marte is the other one. The oh. other Marte. I don't know why I thought there was an Ahmed Marte. Maybe there is somewhere in the league. There's Ahmed Rosario. But yeah. <laughs> Kyle Schwerber standing in the outfield with his hands behind his back like Napoleon. Like, or like, I guess if he did the hand. Pacing around. Oh. 2 and 0 oh so far from you. 2 and 0 oh count. The Iranian Japanese uh, descent player. Three balls, no strike. Which I didn't know that until recently, because his his uh, his birth name's a little different, where it's way more. It's uh. Take your base, ball four. <laughs> <laughs> and they call him a YouTuber too. He is funny on YouTube. That and, is uh, not shortstop. So his, yes, his mother was from Osaka, and his uh, father was is, uh, Iranian. Because his real his 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 birth name is Farid U Darvish Darvishapat. He shortened it, so now it's just U Darvish. Oh and one. But he he good. Nick Ahmed. Two and one to count. It's weird that I, uh, I guess that's why I thought it was Ahmed. Marte, or what did I think? I can't remember what I thought the, the other Marte was name. I don't know. Here we go, though. 2-1. Darvish has got himself in a little bit of trouble uh, early on. Strike two. Two, two. Gives him the old curve. A little shake, shake. A little shake, shake. Here comes the 2-2 pitch to Ahmed from you, Darvish. What will it be? I guess it's a cutter or a slider. I know that's multiple options, and I don't think it was either one. But we'll see. Three, two. That that's not good. good. That, that ain't great. Uh... In early trouble with a full count on the second man up with a man on first and zero outs. Here comes the payoff pitch. Grounded but foul. The tease of a payoff pitch. Here comes another payoff pitch. Ball four. Uh-oh. The quote, uh... The late a 90s, early 2000s messaging service. Uh-oh, this isn't looking good. Ketel Marte is up. He's good. But he's only two for nine against uh, Darvish with three strikeouts. So that's good for us here. A strikeout would be nice. A ground ball at any infielder would be nice. Preferably the shortstop or the second baseman. One and one. I'm not greedy. I'm not asking for a triple play. But a double play would be great. Yeah. There we go. One, two, pitch. Get in that corner. Giving him that low outside corner. Ooh, makes contact. Still one, two. (laughs) 
A pop-up. Kyle Schwarber comes in and he has it. That's good. I'll take that for sure. Batting four. The third baseman. Eduardo Escobar. Ball but foul. No ball, two strikes. O oh, two to Eduardo Escobar. Strike three, there we go. That's the you Darvish that we're starting to like and see more of. Batting fifth, the first baseman, Christian Walker. All right, here comes Christian Walker. He was a rookie last year. He did pretty well. He was, uh, started off pretty solid. I don't know what his numbers are this year. 370, that's really good. Uh, I think he's got some pop too. His brothers actually. His younger brother, uh, can't remember what his what system his younger brother is in, but his younger brother might be pretty good uh, here soon. I think. No ball. One and one. Christian Walker tied for fourth most runs uh, with 21 in the National League. Ooh, couldn't get that low call. To Christian Walker, 3-2 now. As Darvish is throwing his 25th pitch, which is not very efficient, but we'll see how the payoff pitch goes. Strike a three. Darvish escapes the inning, gets his strikeout numbers up, but also his pitches in general are up, which ain't great. But uh, he didn't give up a hit, didn't give up a run, so I guess, I guess good, I guess. I don't know, I don't know. Victor Caratini's up now. That's a ball. That's a ball. I am not even going to defend Victor Caratini anymore. Uh, his average needs to come up before I can defend. Uh, and also, I, I was always defending his at-bats before, but he's had some real bad at-bats. Uh, yeah. So I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. His average has been pretty, pretty bad. Looks like Trent won't be on the show. Oh, that looked high to me. The only thing higher than that pitch is the umpire if he thinks that fucking shit's a strike. Yeah, it's me. Uh, eat hot dogs till I puke. Probably, like... For sure. One and oh. Like, how, well, I should say, how fast of a fastball? Like, 88 or like 100? Because that in itself is like way different. That's the ball. Probably the hot dogs. That could literally like break a, like, that could break a rib. Probably. 
Uh, That's a ball. The only thing helping me is I have a higher percent body fat in that area than most professional athletes, so I have more cushioning. But I've already been in a hot dog eating contest where it's almost made me puke. I feel like the hot dog thing would be almost worse or less bad in every way. Like it would just be really uncomfortable. Oh, down the line! It's gonna be do, do, double bases. Should be double bases. Also known as just a double. Nicely done. Who was that? Was that Hernan Perez? Did he finally do something good? I think I ate nine. I used to have a thing for. I used to have a certificate for it. But it was me and a, it was a team hot dog eating contest. And I think we ate sixteen or seventeen, and I think I ate one more than my partner. But I went, and it was at work, and I went home from work like an hour late. I was like, why did we do a hot dog eating contest in the middle of the day at work? I went home after I did it. I think that was actually my plan all along. It was like, oh, cool, I'll, I'll enter this contest for charity or whatever, and then I'll just make sure I get sick. But I had, yeah, I'll say in between seven and nine is my guess of how many I ate. And it was in like a, I want to say 10 minutes. It was 10 or 20. Maybe it was 15. It was less than 20, probably at least 10. And it wouldn't bother me to eat hot dogs until I puke because I don't care for hot dogs that much anyway. So if I got sick off eating hot dogs and didn't want to eat hot dogs anymore, that's fine because I don't like hot dogs that much, except for when I'm at baseball games. And even then, most of the time now, you can get a bratwurst at a hot dog game. I'd rather have a bratwurst. I, I mostly only like... Uh, here's the pitch. Ah, um, yeah, I mostly only like hot dogs as like a nostalgic thing for baseball. Yes. Or, and also just like bits. It's not only lips and assholes, it's like, I feel like it's the scrapings or just like the sweepings up, you know, of what's left over. The center field is number eight. But yeah, 95 mile per hour, per hour fastball uh, would hurt very wow. bad. Yeah, it'd be worse in both the short and long term. Like, like hot or well, the hot dog thing would be like bad for like 20 minutes. The fastball to the ribs would hurt so bad for the first couple minutes. And then it would it would calm down a little bit, but then the pain for like probably at least a, a few days if not a week would like be lingering and it'd be hard to move around. I imagine. I think it would depend how, where how I got hit. Like exactly where what part of the ribs. If it was the if it was right on the tummy part of the ribs, like I said, that would be probably be Oh, more more likely to be okay. Two two. Ian Happ with a man in scoring position is two two. Madison Bumgarner has thrown thirty seven pitches, which is good that we've got him to throw more pitches this inning. We, because I'm on the team. Uh, but yeah, here we go. Pitch. In Happ. Surprise, surprise! Ian Happ doesn't do the thing I want him to do. Leading up for the diamond back, the catcher, Steven. Steven votes up, although I could have... I keep forgetting who the Cubs have. 
I thought the Cubs had some ca uh, a catcher. Cause Stephen Boat used to be with the A's. No, Who is it the Cubs have? I see her. Cubs. But I think in the minor league. Minor. It's given me people that aren't there anymore. Two balls, no strike. It's naming a lot of people. Uh, they have somebody. I thought the Cubs had somebody that. No, that meant. Was an ex. Uh, just like Stephen Boat. Voight, 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 um, because he might have been on the A's, and I thought the Cubs had somebody that was on the A's, that was similar to that. Three, one, gets it in there, strike number two. You got a full count. Full count, garbage, to Voight. Makes contact. Line ground ball. A lined grounder. And it's an out. That is that. The right field. Goal. Down through. Next time I'm gonna push L2. Sometimes it's a, it, it brings up a uh, a button to push, and I find that interesting because since I'm not actually playing, when it was like L2 defense, I'm like, is it gonna is it is it gonna maybe be like, do you want the shift, or they're gonna they're gonna show me they're doing a shift or something? I don't know. Bad. Ooh, rips it down the line, but foul. Garbage has a mo too. It'd be nice to put him away here on one more pitch as his pitch count is uh, getting a little high. He tried to with the high, the high heat. One and two, count. Ooh. Two two counts. Here comes pitch number thirty-nine. You got a full count. Three two count after having him 0-2. He now has worked it to full. That ain't great, especially when you're about to throw pitch number forty. You're not gonna get far in the game if you're throwing twenty pitches an inning. That's just the way it is. Strike three. So strikeout number three, but like I said, 40 pitches in and he's not even done with the second inning, so. And need I remind you, the last night's game was 18 innings, so the bullpen's kind of depleted. Uh, I don't know how they'll go about having bullpen in this game today. I don't know if it will do, because sometimes they would maybe even, depending on what the score of the game is. Oh, and there goes the no-hitter, I think. But, uh, depending on the score of the game down the line, with last night's craziness, they would maybe bring in a starter. If they were, if they had had enough rest uh, for for some time, I don't know what the, I don't know how many people pitched or if all the bullpen pitched last night or not. But Madison Bumgarner, he's at, I'd be interested to see his batting statistics because his batting statistics, because as far as uh, pitchers go, he's one of the better hitters one there ball, is. One strike. Um, I think he usually has around a home run or two a year. In fact, let's take a look at Madison Bumgarner's hitting stats. Right two. Uh, I think he does. And he's a career 177 hitter. Oh, 
Oh, but he got him out there. Let's see here. I want to give me... I mean, I understand why it won't give me hitting stats. But... There we go, Batty. Yeah, 2015, he had five home runs and 77 at bats. That's a lot of home runs. I'm just double checking to make sure that's right. Yeah, so an 81, that's that's a really high ratio for like regular hitters. That's a high ratio. Although I'm guessing he was just selling out for power. I'm guessing since uh, people don't take hit, uh, pitchers seriously as hitters, that he was just like, I'm just going to try and hit the ball as hard as I can. Um, in 2014, he had 15 RBI. But yeah, so he has had he's had years nope, with ball. four home runs, five home runs, three home runs, two three ball, home runs, one no home runs, two home runs. Yeah, so he had two home runs last year. So those aren't ball, terrible ball. numbers for a pitcher. Oh, you driver strikes out. This strikeout from Madison Bumgarner, if you're keeping track at home, as I'm just now realizing, uh, he's almost had five of the se se or yeah, five of the seven outs have been strikeouts. So yeah. Chris Bryant's up. Yeah, so say it's somebody. Ooh, oh, outside. outside. After this, uh, we may give Gerald a call and talk to Gerald to see if he answers. Hee ha! Hee ha! Hee ha ha! One and one to Chris Bryant. Massive Bumgarner, who's about to enter his. 46th pitch of the game. There was strike two. Uh, here we go. Ooh, yes! Had the shift not been in place, the second baseman might have gotten to it, but the shift was in place, so the second baseman didn't get to it. So Chris Bryant is on first. And I'll stop talking like that. Um... Yeah, they both both pitchers are throwing a lot of pitches. They both have high strikeout numbers, but that is often uh, uh, ooh an unintended consequence of striking people out is you throw a lot of pitches a lot of times. Uh, Javier Baez, though, for one, struck out in first in the first. He's got a lot of power against left-handed pitchers. That's why I basically forced him into the lineup. Although, like I said, I have a. I have a feeling that the energy of players uh, does really affect their the gameplay. Because they're like, hey, he's tired. You shouldn't play him. And I said, fuck you, game. He's playing against this left-handed pitcher. Yeah! And delivers a hit to the left side. Nice line drive. Runners on first and second. With one guy out. I don't know if Schwarber's up. He might. No, Wilson Contreras. Oh, wow. Uh, Javi Baez is on an 11-game hitting streak. Which, like I said before, I feel like his average should be higher. I think he's just going, like, one for four every game. Uh, but it's a streak nonetheless. Wilson Contreras is up. I think, believe he had a single earlier. He did. The best hitter on the team right now. Pretty much the whole season. Uh... You expect big things from him almost every game. So let's hope here that he can do something. 366 average with 14 home runs. Strike one. It looked a little low. There's not, not a lot he could have necessarily done with that. Good take, I'd say. He's got six RBI his last eight games. Let's see if he can up those numbers a little bit right here, right now. I'm going to sneeze. Give me a second. Hey! -hoo! What? Hey! -hoo! Ah, all right. Hajibaba. 1-1 pitch. 
almost a mirror of the ball of the thing that was called the strike second out, but just a tad bit lower, so called the ball. 2 1 pitch. Ooh, right where I believe Contreras liked it. 2 2 pitch, the pitch number 56 from Madison Bumgarner coming to Wilson. Wilson knocks it foul. The catcher says, hey, give me the ball, umpire. And umpire says, all right, just wait a second. 2 2 pitch to Wilson. Strike three. He is another one that was, or I guess his energy wasn't that low, because I think Caratini pitched almost the whole game. So Schwerber's up. He doesn't do well against left-handed pitchers. But you know what? The game doesn't always go by its own rules very well. A lot of contradictions, so who knows what he'll do here. Ooh, a little high on this cut. A little high there. So, uh, similarly to, like I said, you Darvish pitching a lot of pitches, Madison Bumgarner is about to be throwing, throwing pitch from a 59, so he's about to be averaging 20 pitches an inning as well. So, yeah, he's going to be at least averaging 20 pitches an inning, depending, uh, or, well, for sure, minimum 20 after this pitch. Uh, so yeah, they're both throwing even though they have yet to give up a lot of runs and they're both throwing a lot of strikeouts They're throwing a shit ton of pitches this this uh, If if both of them got through the sixth inning, I would be amazed uh, fifth inning maybe They both have the benefit of being uh, around long enough and having uh, Being considered real good long enough and that's strike three But the Cubs get some hits, get Madison to, to throw some pitches. Uh, I feel like once the starters come out of this game, runs will be scored. Uh, there were too many, too many, too much of the bullpen was used last night to not uh, yeah. Although, no, that was against the Pirates. Oh, shit. I wasn't even thinking about that. So, I don't know what the Diamondbacks bullpen looks like. I hadn't even thought about that. That ain't great. Uh, so, yeah, the Cubs will definitely be at the disadvantage there. Oh, line drive, but picked up by Caratini at first base. Nick Ahmed walked in the first. Uh, Darvish has got his control a little bit better after those first couple. Uh, I believe he maybe walked the first couple people. Oh one. Oh, Nick Ahmed's played his whole career with the Diamondbacks. Isn't that cute? I do. I I genuinely do like it when players uh, will play. Oh, a little pop up. Could Caratini get the second out as well? He does, so far, two outs, both caught by Caratini. Now back, the center fielder, Ketel Marte. Ketel Marte is up. Here's pitch number 51. Strike one. Ooh, good slider, but he doesn't get him to bite. One and one. One and one count. He gets him to bite on that one, and once again, Caratini got it. Caratini makes every out of the inning. Getting that cardio in. Speak of the devil, Caratini's up to start off the... Uh, 
order. Caratini, Perez, Souza Jr. A lot of people starting today that don't usually start because of the 18 inning game the last first night. That really seven. took a lot of energy out of a lot of people's sales. Um, in reality, they maybe would have brought up uh, somebody from the minor leagues for like a game. Oh, Caratini gets it on the ground. Can he beat it? No, because he's slow. Uh, yeah, the third baseman didn't even try to didn't even try to barehand it. He was like, I have time to glove this. Hernan uh, Perez uh, knocked a double down the line last at bat. Let's see what he does here. One and zero. He was signed out of Venezuela. He's played for a couple of teams. I believe he's played for the Brewers and the Cubs. Uh, I don't know who else. That's the ball. All right. 2-0 to Hernan Perez. It was good because Caratini only had one or two pitches thrown, so it was kind of like, eh. Strike one. Here we go. 2-1 pitch. Makes it 2-2. Clutching in his midsection, we may have pulled something in his room for the game. And I mean, I never like to be happy if someone's injury, but oh, Merrill Kelly's good though. See, look, he's good, and he's got the stamina of a starter. So this is almost worse. I'm not. I, I am complaining. I don't like that they have him out of the bullpen. Because he's supposed to be a starter this year, I think. Doubtful. But yeah, so Madison Bumgarner had a lot of strikeouts. He's doing really well, but looks like he's injured. And the, but the outs continue to come as Hernan Perez grounds out. And like I said, Merrill Kelly, uh, I'm assuming his stamina in this is really high, so I... I wouldn't be surprised to see him throw three or four innings. And his ERA looked real good, too. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to think here. Ooh. Nice. Nice take. It looked like a good pitch, though. All right, here comes one two pitch to Steven Souza Jr. No, that's low. Down. Ball. Just a little bit low. Low, low, low. Sorry, I'm sorry. Hi, 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 but still a strike because he fouled it off. Foul ball. Two two pitch. Full count. Full count. All right, Steven Souza takes the walk. Which I believe is going to bring up is Darvish up? Oh no. Ian Happ's up. Might as well be the fucking pitcher. The way Ian Happ's been hitting. Uh, the one good thing about bringing in Merrick Kelly, the right-hander, is that hitters like Ian Happ and uh, Kyle Schwerber both have way more power against right-handers. Whereas Chris Bryant and Javi Baez do not as well uh, oh. have that. I don't know why I said that. Popular. But here we go. That's the ball. Two more pitch. Ooh, half. Two and one. You figure with a guy with that bad of a batting average would just uh, 
take take as many balls as they can. Take as many balls as they can. Three one. With Steven Sousa on first, will he take or will he try and hit a homer? He tries to hit it hard and he does hit it hard. Can't be mad at him for that one as he hit it very hard. It just happened to be right at the center fielder. Well, nuts. Eduardo Escobar coming up. The third baseman. Eduardo Escobar. One ball, two strikes. Wow. Well, that's just untrue. I mean, he played okay. Uh, he did play. His playoff numbers were really good for the Diamondbacks. I think he hit close to 400. Uh, I do think that... I do like that he... Um, because the Cubs basically got rid of him. Like, they weren't going to start him. And so when they won the World Series, he's like, uh, it, was, it was kind of shit-talking, but I loved it because I like Mark Grace. Where he was like, it's good to know I wasn't good enough to play first base for the Cubs, but I was good enough to play first base for the World Series champions. Which is fucking beautiful. Beautiful. If there's anyone who deserved it. it. It's always funny when someone plays one season with a different team and wins the championship. It's like a Ray Bork played like 20 seasons for the for the Bruins. Uh, uh, Ray Bork played like 20 seasons for the Bruins, or, night, or he played 20 seasons overall. I think he played like 19 or 20 seasons for the Bruins. Didn't win anything. Goes to the Avalanche for one year and uh, won the Stanley Cup. Stanley! Patrick Waugh. Old Patrick Waugh. Straw hair. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll be right back. Let me get some Mountain Dew. You guys want Mountain Dew? Anyone want Mountain Dew? All right, I'll be back to Mountain Dew. Open up if you want this Mountain Dew. Uh, open up your your USB port. I'll put it in. 
There's got to be some sort of uh, adapter. Some a do a an a adapter. I bought just the two liter for once. I usually get a bunch of, uh, I usually just get like a couple of 20 ounces because I like the freshness of it. Or like, oh, I even get like, I, for a while, I like the little can, like the six packs or the eight can, or the eight packs of like the eight ounce cans. Fuck! Chris Brown strike out. Chris Brown, he don't strike out. Um, now that but I just said the hell with it. If you uh, get like a beer bong connected to the outside, to your inside, and to your inside, I mean to your butthole. Just like they do in that, what's his name movie? That John Cena movie where he butt chugs. Ball, out. Where he hang, where he it's him and Judd Apatow's wife, and uh, I can't remember who else. Ball. Butt chugging Mountain Dew. Now that's a peak, if you know what I mean. That's ball four. Take whatever back. happened, Pika, Whatever happened to Zenith? Anyone know? Now that is. TV company. Whatever happened to Zenith? We had a Zenith television growing up. Runner, 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 runner stealing. Oh, Will he get here? Oh, he I thought he was going to get there. That was a good throw, though. Oh, I think he did get there. I don't like that. There are challenges, at least what I saw. Uh, in other versions of the game, they allow... I know. In other versions of the game, they allow you to do the challenges as manager when you're playing. Like, uh, like if you're like, oh, that didn't look right, like you can literally throw the thing and they'll do an instant replay. So I kind of like that because I liked the idea that it will it can intentionally miss a call and force your... And you, and you can't look at the replay. I think once you look at the replay... No, I don't think so. But do you remember that baseball... Vir, what was it called? Virtual All-Stars? One ball, no strike. They had one of them at... Uh, did they have one at Forbidden Planet? Because I, I remember having that game on the Wii. Yeah, Neo Geo. Because I had the second one on my Wii, or my Wii U, because it was on virtual console. But that game's crazy, because you can... I don't know if you can bribe the umpires, but you can, like... You can buy play, you can. I think you can give players steroids in it. Essentially. And it's funny because whenever you do any of the shady things, it's just like you talk to the owner and it's just like a 98-year-old white man who's just like, yeah, let's get things done. Oh, full count. 
Darvish has 69 pitches. Strike three. Would have been ball four, but it's strike three. Fifth strike out of the game for you. The batter number 15. Second baseman, Hilton Harlow. Morgan. What, through his butthole? <laughs> Babe Ruth didn't need... Babe Ruth was all... It was all hot dogs, baby. That's... That's where he got his energy. He... He infused... He infused... Hot dogs and cigars into a, into a singular thing. One, but one. check this shit. That's a funny quote. I'm gonna quote you, Nancy. Two balls, one strike. It'll let me. Let's we'll see. Out, he got out of the inning. That's good. I think he got two strikeouts and then uh, got the next one out quickly. You Darvish for for his control issues has only given up one Your hit. Now, Probably two or three walks. Struck eight. out five or six. Or, yeah, I think six. Uh, Mike Leak. What? They keep putting start like these are starting pitchers. Every pitcher. Hold on. I'm in bats. I'm just interested because uh, I swear that every pitcher they put in is someone that's in their starting rotation. Okay, Mike Leake is listed as the third person in their starting rotation. Merrill Kelly is listed as... So, Merrill Kelly is listed as the fifth. Uh, and that was on MLB.com. Let me go to ESPN. Hold on. <clears throat> to see if it uh, has similar to the depth chart. Yeah, Merrill Kelly's listed. It's just the opposite, too. Uh, in this one, Merrill oh, Kelly's oh. listed as the fourth starter. So, Mike Lee. Uh, isn't listed in, in, in the ESPN one. Uh, Merrill Kelly isn't listed, or well, is listed as the sixth, I think, in the uh, MLB one. My point is that both of them are listed uh, in one of them as, the top, as one of the top four starters. So why isn't at least one of them, uh, yeah, at least one of them should not have been now the, the guy. Kyle Strike one. No. 
that miss, that's the ball. Oh, hits into the shift. The, having to, he almost had an infield hit that someone in the outfield had to come to get. The first baseman, number seven, Victor Caratini. Here comes Victor Caratini. Down, ball. Take some ball. That down, ball. First I thought it was going to be a hit, then I thought it was going to be caught, then I thought it was going to be, then it was a hit. And I don't think he made contact with it, so they'll probably give him a hit there, and he needed that. Hernan Perez is one for two with a double. If he can knock in another double, let's give us a fighting chance to, oh, it might drop. No, it does not. Probably call Gerald here uh, soonish. Marte, Ahmed, Marte. So, Starling, Nick Ahmed, and then, uh, Leading up for the Diamondbacks, Ketel. The left fielder, Starling, Marte. I don't think they're related. They just have the same ones. Here. Pizza! One and one. Ooh. Strike two, one and two from you to Starling Marte. Line down the line. Oh, Brian has trouble picking it up. He had to backhand it. I I don't know if you call that an error and hit. Maybe an error. They called it a base hit. That's got to hurt a little for you as he had a one hitter. Now it's two hitter. That sh should have been fielded. Uh, so yeah, but Nick Ahmed's up now. He had a walk in the first. Here we go with the O-O. And hopefully it's not an O-O. Hopefully it's an O, yeah. Oh, no. That should have been a strike. Nose, nose. Top hat, top hat. Nose, nose, chin, chin. Nose, nose. Top hat, top hat. Here we go. Ooh, darn near hits him. Ooh, the Cubs have their own nose, chin, ear. They had an ear that the Diamondbacks didn't have. 2-0 pitch. Darvish, 84 pitches in. All right, he gets a strike. Ooh, he goes for him at first. He does not get him. Give a call to old Gerald. Two and two. Strike three. Strikeout number seven for you, Darvish. The center fielder, number four, Cattell. Gerald is not going to answer. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice She is. Perhaps we'll give Trent a call. Oh! Pitch got away from him, and now both Mar two Martes on first and second. If this was who's on first, but with Martes, it'd be even more confusing because they're both on first and second. 
Marte is on first. No, Marte is on second. Yeah, you're right. What? Um. So here we go. Here we go. Oof. One and up. This could very easily be Darvish's last uh, hitter of the game. It will be dependent. I think for sure this is going to be his last inning. Uh, would be my guess. We'll see. One and zero pitch. Nope. This oh. high is control starting to get away from him again, which at the worst possible time. Two zero to Eduardo Escobar. He's zero for two on the day, but has pretty good numbers, I believe, overall this year. Strike one, two balls, one with strike. a four seam fastball. Here comes the 2-1. Strike three. Strikeout number eight for you, Darvish. What a crazy game. I'm next, Christian Walker. I think he had a hit earlier. No, he's 0 for 2. Oof. Makes contact, but down the line and foul, thankfully. Batting 363 on the year with 8 home runs, 31 RBI. Uh, very similar to Wilson Contreras' numbers, except have about half as many, or well, a little more than half uh, the amount of home runs. Oof. One and one. One one pitch to Christian Walker. Eesh. I don't like that Darvish is 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 uh, going high with a lot of these pitches. It's kind of a I mean it's good for strikeouts a lot, but it's dangerous to go that high. Okay, are they gonna send? They're sending him to. If this is a good throw, it's it's a fucking terrible throw. Who the Fuck his right field right now. now Whoever's in right field, that they should have probably got him out there. Uh, I mean, that guy was very fast, uh, but still, that was a very bad throw, and it was a short throw too. So it was an inaccurate throw. It was kind of hardly thrown, but not hardly thrown. It was barely thrown, but he threw, threw it hard. But it was a not on target, and it was like 150 feet. Like, that was not a far throw for an outfielder. Like, that was the, as far as outfielder throw goes, that doesn't That's get much easier than what that was. I think it was Steven Souza. So one two on pitch one hundred here now. Uh, yeah. See if Darvish can get one more strikeout to presumably be the last, or a ground out would be nice. He got it, but the Diamondbacks score a bullshit run because of bad defense in right field. Souza Jr. Speak of the devil. I'm pretty sure he's the one who fucking did it. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll see we'll see here what happens. The only redeeming thing you could do right now is hit a home run. If you get a hit, sure, whatever. But hit a home run and all is forgiven. So that's what you have to do for all to be forgiven. Just hit a home run right now. Not necessarily your fault, as that looked low, possibly in fact. Oh. 0-2. Oh, 0-2 counts. That 1 and 2. 1 and 2 count. And seventh inning, Mike Lee pitching. Not only is all not forgiven, there is extra animosity thrown on top the thrown on top of the anger toward the Stevenson's opinion. 
Jason Hayward would almost definitely have thrown that guy out, I think. Because a really good throw would have got him. And, uh, like I said, that throw was Taylor. Ma that was like right field 101 uh, throws. Well, I don't know who's going to pinch hit. My guess would be Rizzo, probably. Nope. Ian Hap's up now. It'd be nice if he got on base. Drive. And he hits it once again, but right at the center fielder. It's hard for me to be mad at Hap as both uh, times he's had contact. He's hit it really well. It's just been right at people. Ladies and gentlemen. It is Anthony Rizzo. God, I'm good at predicting things, except for if the Cubs are going to win or not. Anthony Rizzo. Well, let's see if Anthony Rizzo can get it going here. Oh one. That 276, eight home runs, 19 RBI with an 861 OPS. Drag two. Rizzo hits it hard, but not hard enough. We're going to call old Trent Straczynski. Your attention, please. Now pitching for Chicago. Number 30, Alex Mill. Hey, Trent Straczynski. Hey, Spencer Lowe. You're welcome to the show. Oh, hey, I'm on. All right. Yeah. Well, friendly phone call. I got it. Yes. <laughs> you, assumed, you assumed I was just calling you out of friendship. Ha ha. <laughs> Joke's on you, buddy. You're on Twitch. Joke's always on me, man. Yeah. I hear you. Joke's always on me. Yeah. That's like, like, like God. Well, I'm just a nice. I like. I hate. Uh, I always hate listening to people complain about being nice guys. I know it's cliched to complain about them, but when everyone's like, God, oh, I'm just such a nice guy. That's the reason why everything's going wrong for me. Yeah. A lot of people. They, they, yeah. A lot of people say I'm too nice, but what they really mean is I'm too polite. Yeah. Uh, but I am too nice to correct them. Yes, that's fair. You're like, a lot of people say I'm too nice. And that's, you know, you can have your opinion. <laughs> dumb idiot. Yeah. No, you know, and they, a lot of people say I'm, I'm too nice, but, you know, who am I to disagree? You know? You know? Exactly. Yeah. That's you fair. Get you get it, man. Yeah. No, I hear oh, you. Yeah. What's, the, what's the score? One to zero, the Cubs are losing in the uh, seventh inning. Uh, they, used up all, they used up all their juice in that uh, 16 inning. They, they really oh, did. Uh, like, everyone had really low energy. And not only that, it was a, it's, they started a new series today. So, they had, uh, so it wasn't even like, if they would have been playing the Pirates again, it would have been more even because both teams would have exhausted all the resources. But in this game, it was like they went and go went and played the Diamondbacks. I had to I had to to bench like two or three of my of the starters because their energy levels were so low. Uh, yeah, in fact, I went against the computer's wishes where they were like, "You should sit this person because they're tired," and I was like, "No, like I can't." If, if only. That's funny you say that because we were just talking about that earlier where there was this game called like Baseball All-Stars or Baseball Stars where I'm pretty sure you can give your your players steroids. And uh, and you can also like hire ringers and stuff. It was a Neo Geo game. Or they made two of them. But I had it for my Wii on the virtual console. console. And they maybe had it at... Did you ever go to Forbidden Planet much ever? Oh, yeah. Uh, they, yeah the, the baseball game there. That might have been... I'm not sure if they had it in that version. But uh, I remember them being like, uh, 
uh, and it was weird because whenever you would do something that was shady, it was you'd always talk to like the 97 year old owner who's like, let's give let's give steroids to this guy or whatever. And it was always really strange. I think I can't remember. I know you could buy really good players out of nowhere, but I also think you could be like, let's make this player better. Wink, wink, or something. Uh, I don't know. I need to relook. But yeah, how you doing, Trent? How you been? Hello? Still there? Trent? We lost Trent. Trent go. Keep going. One ball, no strike. Now I'm looking up Zenith. Why is this a shirt? There's a Bugs and Lola shirt. <laughs> That's just... I don't understand it. No, that meant... Sorry, it's a very, balls, it's very no sexual. Strike. And I don't understand why... I'm more confused about why it came up. Uh, where it came up at. But now I have to send it to my friends. <laughs> Because it's Bugs spanking Lolo as she's bare butt. Uh, it's so weird. So I'm emailing it to myself so that I can... Okay, anyway, Tim LaCastro's up. Oh, he, walk. he got walked. Now better. No left fielder. Forward. Hey. Starling Marte is up the top, the top of the order with a man uh, with a man with men on first and second. One and up. it deep, but not deep enough. Are they going to send the runner to third? No, they're holding. Which is good. The batter number 13. Top, Nick. Oh, man. All right, Nick Ahmed's up with two outs. Okay, first of all, Chris Bryant should have had that, maybe. And then Kyle Schwarber missed fields a fucking slow ground ball so that the run scores. Both runs have been scored because of outfield incompetency. This is very frustrating. Very frustrating.
Ground ball. Picked up. Yeah. Jesus, who's 99 speed? Bruh. Country music. Bruh. Oh, I think Trent may be calling Ladies me back. Trent did call me back. Your attention, please. She called me at, four, at 420. Bam! We'll see here. Leading off the cup, the third baseman, Chris Run. Okay, I guess Trent does not want to answer. That's okay. That's okay. That's the ball. That's okay. 1-0. to Chris Bryant. It's not good when I... I mean, it's it's only two runs. This is very easily sur surmountable, but R.G. Bradley's pretty good. So I don't I don't know what's... I don't know what's... I don't know what's happening. Oof. Chris Bryant's hanging in there. Nice eye. That's the ball. Oh, hits it. It's far, but it's foul. Nut. Oh, nut. Strike three, because of fucking force. Up next to the cut, the shortstop, Javier Baio. Three and out of Javier Baez with Wilson Contreras on deck. So now I'm now I'm interested because as we all know, Wilson Contreras has been getting it done. He been doing it good. He been getting it done. Oh, strike one, but not a bad take at all. Ball four. It looked like it was on the outside corner, but I'm I'm happy about it. I'll take uh, Baez getting the walk there. Now that is the as long as they don't steal uh, with when it will Wilson's out. Unless you know you can score. Because I don't think we should do that here. Because there's the one run, you know. I mean, it matter. Every run matters right now, but and, uh, it's because it's not the ninth inning. But with the, the two hitters coming up, are good hitters. So and both have power, uh, I believe. Uh, run it, run it, run it. Oh, he's going. That missed. That's the ball. He gets there. Questionable steal as last and a bad jump. Uh, but he got there. Oh, Gerald's available. We get Gerald a call here. Right. Two and one count. Hello. 
Hello, Gerald. Uh, Did you just climax? Oh yeah, yeah. That's why I took. That's why you called twenty minutes ago. It took me that long to finish. You can only get hard from not answering one of my phone calls, and you can only climax from answering one of my other phone calls. And what they say, uh, four, four twenty glaze it. Yes. 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 That's the. Yep. That's the saying. I have no disagreements for me there. How's it going? It's going. Yeah, you got another day, another dollar. Yeah. What a. Uh... So you are still working? I thought you. No, no, no. I just found a dollar. Okay. You know, we go to the pools. Yeah. The vending machines. Yeah. Some change if you look. If you kick the vending machines hard enough. Some money will come out of them. That's that's uh, is what I've heard. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, yeah, I'm doing some freelance stuff. Oh, Cal Schwarber gets it. The bases are now going to be lower. The Cubs are actually down two to nothing, and the bases are now loaded with one out. Usually, uh, I I just stop paying attention to it when we're talking. But I'll be back and forth between that and us. I I've been doing a bunch of freelance writing, and I like. Did a couple for somebody, uh, and they like. Uh, luckily, I am doing an hour, and luckily, I am way under budget for what I told them it was going to be. Like, I was like, it's probably going to be this amount, but I still was under even the low amount. But I did like three fourths of what it was going to be, and then they're just like, yeah, I don't know if I like this, and they but they okayed the first two or three, and so I was just like. Well, okay. Like, and they're like, I want it to be like this, and I want to be like, okay, I'll do it like that now. But, but before I was like, con- like I felt very concerned about making like I wanted to, be, I wanted to get even under the estimate, even of the low end of the estimate. But now I'm kind of like, well, I, I'm doing the work again. Like, and you, you like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, That is used. Yes. That's how we works. Yes. But especially though, because I often, because I gave them two or three and they were like, I like these. So I made five or five, like five more that were similar in style and humor and content to that. Uh, and then they were like, I don't think this works for the medium. And I was like, but you said, and they're like, yeah, but we're going to change it. So I was like, okay, well, all right. Like, as long as they still, if you're going to pay me again, like, the you know, it's going to be the hot... And, and I still think it'll be less than the highest part of my estimate still. Uh, but it's still gonna, but now it's gonna be more than it was gonna be because cause the communication has been so so. Uh, and I'm happy, like I said, if they're gonna pay me to do it, I'm happy to do it, but I was kinda like, well. And the thing, and then the way they want it now is easy to do, because I think they want it to be kind of like, uh, uh, Parodying like famous people on social media type stuff, uh, so I think it'll be easy. Um, oh, three two pitch, Hector! Oh wow, there's so much going. Okay, so it's three two pitch with one out. Cubs are down by two, bases loaded, and the person pitching is the guy who used to be the closer for the Cubs. Uh, and they send it this right up the middle. Oh, oh really? What's the hyphen then? Oh, never mind. That was just uh, that was a piece of, co- of chocolate chip that I dropped in between them. <laughs> no, no, that just means that uh, they got married and uh, wanted to keep. Ah, them. they wanted to keep. See, uh, it's funny how short-sighted hyphenating names is. You know what I mean? Because it's like you can only do that one time. Like, like. You, let's hope that you're not friends with somebody who's similar to how you want to name yourself because you're going to end up with a kid and they're going to get married to somebody else and they're going to have four fucking last names and it's going to be confusing. Yeah, don't forget, uh, oh, okay. I don't know, I wanted to keep her last name, so she was Eleanor Roosevelt hyphen Roosevelt. Yes, Eleanor. It was just Eleanor Roosevelt scare, squared. I believe she just put an exponent at the end of it. Uh... Oh, Hernan Perez puts a charge into one. It falls, and it's going to be a ground rule double. So that'll score one. The Cubs take the lead now. Runners on second and third. They had just tied up the game. 
with a, a hit right up the middle. And now Hernan Perez gets his second double of the game to give the Cubs the lead. Um, I like, I under, uh, it makes more sense what they do in a lot of Latin cultures, I believe, where they like, when they get married, uh, they get they just get rid of their middle name and they make their maiden name their middle name. Like that's what my sister did with her name. Um, because like her name is Jennifer Laux Buren, but it's literally, I think she like, uh, and luckily her middle name was Lynn already. So so all those monogram towels are still the same, uh, for, 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 can be similar. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Cause her name is Jennifer Laux Buren now, but I don't think it's like a hyphenated thing. I think it's just literally her middle name got, I think she changed it to Laux. If that makes sense. I mean, it's all... Who cares? Yes, I agree. Oh, yeah, totally. I find it interesting is all. Uh, like, I, I would totally... It's interesting because like, in, a, in a lot of Southeast Asian cultures, uh, you take the name of whoever's family is more powerful, yes. basically. Yeah, so it doesn't like, matter if it's woman or man. It's who has, like, more money, right? Uh, what was that? See, yeah, like, regardless of gender, you take the more powerful family, right? Yes, regardless yes. of gender. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, uh, like, my mom... I think like some of some of my uncles and aunts have different middle names because they had so many kids. They were like, "Okay, we'll let the other one have a couple of these." Really? That's her last name. Yeah. Interesting. Like, uh, this, she's she's oh. one of like nine. Oh, so, okay. So so they took some like, of them took their just to like keep the legacy going. Some of them took yeah, the yeah. name of the, fa- the father, and some of them took the name of the son. Uh, the mother, yeah. 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 Or yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, father, yeah. Yeah. father and mother, yeah. Uh, was that based on gender? Did like the male children take the dad's name and the female, no, or no? Just, just uh, all over the place. I think it was based on order. Of okay. Course. Just like after a certain point, they were like, okay, from this point on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, For first, I thought, like, oh, it might be a home run. Oh no, it's a double. I thought you were gonna make it. It was like a kickball situation, <laughs> where or not even kickball, where it's just back and forth. Like you got last time, I get this time. The Cubs are making the lead uh, even better. They just got another double, scores a run. I believe there'll be runners at second and third once again. And Jason Hayward is coming in to uh, pinch hit. Uh, by the way, we got complimented. We got complimented about our banter uh, from yeah from Nick Butler's brother. Because uh, uh, he said he watched it and told Nick that he thought it. He was like, it was pretty awesome. It was like, it was just him and somebody talking about movies. And it was, I think it was the last time we talked. Uh, so that's fun. I just got done watching an episode of, uh, of What We Do in the Shadows. Yeah. It was a really good episode because uh, the vampire was checking his hotmail no email. <laughs> yeah. And he got, a, he got one of those chain letters. Oh, the mailer demon. The, curse the mailer. Real. Yeah. So they, the whole episode was the vampires trying to find right. people's emails that they could send this chain letter to, so they wouldn't be cursed. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I didn't. Don't they also have a joke about the mailer demon or something like that? Something. Uh, <laughs> well, that, that show is really good. <laughs> I haven't watched it at all because of my. Like I said, I've been trying to maintain a. Uh, not I, I I don't know I would like to watch it I bet it's really good I just since it's I have my uh, own thing I've wanted to FX, do so if you have Hulu then yeah you have access to it and the thing is I love everybody on that show I really like I like everyone on that show more than most people that like that show like ever like like uh because B- Dave Barry's on it right yeah or Matt Matt Barry Matt Barry and uh and Jermaine Clement and uh. Yeah, those are two of my favorite fucking... Like, you've watched all Toast of London, right? Uh, uh, no, no, I haven't seen Really? That. Do you like Matt Berry? Sure. Oh, man. Watch Toast of London. It's... It's... I should say, do you like the way he talks? Because if, <laughs> if you like the way he talks, then you'll like Toast of... It's a lot of him saying words not correctly. He'll be like, I, I was eating a cashew. Like, stuff like that. And and his job is he's a voice like he's a voice actor, so it's a lot of him recording voiceover work. And he like and the people that he re- like the company he records for like doesn't like him like the producer, so they're always like embarrassing him and making him like. Uh, there's one where the word is just yes, 
So he's just saying yes a bunch of different ways, and they like keep making it do it forever. And then he's like, "Am I done yet?" And he's like, "How about we try this? Uh, how about we go a little different? How, uh, let's see what happens when you say no." And he's like, they, they, "That's how it ends." But uh, yeah, it's real. It's it's weird because it's also a musical some of the times. Like there's like probably at least one song in at least every other episode, and it's comes out of nowhere. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's not. Oh, up the middle, ground into the middle, and they send him. It looks like they're going to score two, and they do. The game is now well within the Cubs uh, to win. Um, but And also there's a John Hamm episode, and it's called Ham on Toast. Oh, John Hamm. Yeah. I love how he wants – I love how comedians – like, how – there's like uh, comedians love John Hamm because of how cool he is, and John Hamm loves comedians because Whoa. it's like how musicians love to hang out with actors, and actors love to hang out with musicians because like because they like wish they could do the other thing as well as the other person does that their thing. I don't know. Well, one of these days he'll slip up and no, reveal no. to me the secret location of that delicious ham. Yes, yes. That's why I watched his stuff. I mean. I'm a little upset uh, that uh, that he has not been in any Ham's beer commercials because uh, I'm trying to think where that's I wonder where that's located. I'm guessing Wisconsin or Minnesota, but I don't know. St. Paul, Minnesota. Okay. I watched. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, that's right. Last time we were talking, I should we should continue. Yeah. Uh, so I finished Popeye. Yeah. And, uh, now for my thoughts on Popeye. How? Are, it, what are your uh, thoughts on the nineteen? I want to say nineteen eighty-two, maybe somewhere around there. It's around that. Nineteen eighty-two. Like Robert Altman. Uh. Uh. What's his name? Like, uh. Harry Nielsen did the soundtrack. Robin Williams introducing Robin Williams, I believe. <laughs> And it's Shelley Duvall. Weird. It, it's it's like, like I, it's, I categorize it under. Uh, well, here's what I say is that it's. I, I kind of didn't like it, but it was a matter of taste, not incompetence. Yeah. So it was like a cilantro right. type situation. Are, are made well, but I just don't care for that. Yeah. Like, like it was interesting the style of the music in it, where it was extremely simple lyrics. Yeah. Like a lot of the songs were just one or two phrases repeated over and over again. He loves me. He loves me. He yeah, loves exactly. me. He loves me. And that's how all the songs were. <laughs> I told you, cocaine. It was just them going to Malta and doing a lot of cocaine. I just didn't like the look of it. It was, it was a big thing for me. Yeah, it has an. It has a. Even though it was made in the '80s, it has like a weird overexposed look, kind of, doesn't it? Yeah, it's like washed out mm-hmm. colors. Like, like I feel like if, if it had been more colorful and cartoony, then I feel like I would have liked that more. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, but you know, it's interesting, and it's not like it was a complete waste of time. Uh, and I do like that song, the He Loves Me song. You like the He Loves Me, Holly? What about the I Am What I Am What I Am? Song in the whole thing. You think that's the best song in the whole thing? And, and Shelly no, Duvall is, is credited as the writer of that song. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I was unaware. I, mean, I thought Harry knew. I mean, writer, she wrote two lines. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the crazy thing about uh, being credited as a writer for, like, m- music or or for a lot of things. Literally, if she wrote the word the in there and she's like, you could be credited as a co-writer. Like, technically. That's all you need to have. I watched a bunch of movies. Yeah? I watched The Dirty Dozen. That was good. It's been a while since I watched The Dirty Dozen. Uh, it, it, it's it's always interesting when you watch uh, like an older movie that is that, that has very modern sensibilities about the way it's all put together. And... Does it? I I've been it's been a while since. Uh oh, uh oh. The Diamondbacks hit a two run homer in the bottom of the eighth. This game just became a three run game. A little uh, concerning. Um, but yeah, that's. Is that is that Lee Marvin or not Lee Marvin? Is it Lee Marvin? No, it's uh. Why can't I think of his name? James Coburn, right? Um, yeah, I think 
think so. James Coburn and Charles Bronson. Yeah, Charles Bronson. Your namesake. Uh, doing, that, doing that voice he does. Charles hey, Bronson. Hey, the Pally. Hey, I killed a bunch of people, and now I'm going to kill more. Hey. Yeah, it's a, it's, a funny, it's a funny movie. It's well made. It's, uh, yeah. You know, I'm interested... Uh, uh, to see what you think of the movie if you get a chance to look at it. I love it, and I had never heard of it before, and I haven't seen it since, and I don't know what it's streaming on. But it's called What Did You Do in the War, Daddy? And it's a... You know, you know who Blake Edwards is, right? Who did, like, the Pink Panther... He, like, directed all the Pink Panther stuff. Um, it, he did it, and he, wrote, he maybe co-wrote it, but it's got a bunch... It's James Coburn is, like, one of the leads in it. And uh, the whole pre- it's a comedy. It's a war comedy. The whole premise, and I loved it, uh, but it's been a while since I watched it. But the whole premise is it's this American, uh, these all these American troops are like going into this, Ita- like trying to take over this Italian city. And they think it's going to be like a big fight. And the Italians are like playing soccer when they get there. <laughs> like they're just not even like ready. Uh, and the Italians are like, they're like totally okay with them taking the town. They're like, oh, it's fine if you guys take over the town, but let us, like, tonight's our wine festival or whatever. So they're like, so let us have our wine festival tonight. Let us have our wine festival tonight, uh, and then tomorrow you guys can take over. And they're like, oh, okay. Yes, yes. Because they play poker. with the, they, the, Both sides play poker, and they get wasted, and they end up switching uniforms with each other. Um and uh, and like the American general like sleeps with the with, with the Italian general's like wife or, or girlfriend, and so like it's re- it's really absurd. But um, also, I love that James. Like when I was little, I always assumed that James Coburn's voice was like how he sounded once he got older. But that's how he always sound. Like James Coburn's always talked like like has always had that low. Yes, honey, I'd like to. <laughs> uh, well, because the first movie I saw him in was Maverick. And, and he's very good in Maverick in what limited time. Uh, that he's... Ma- Maverick? Ah, yeah, you didn't like that, right? Oh, you liked it. Okay, I thought someone else, someone else must have watched it recently and said they didn't like it. But John Milius wrote that. That's that's the other thing is you need to check out that John Milius documentary. Who? Um, oh yeah, yeah, the, the, the Indianapolis speech and everything. Yeah, the USS Indianapolis speech, and and John Goodman's character in The Big Lebowski is literally just him being him. <laughs> like it's just him being John Milius. Like if you look at a picture of John Milius, he's wearing all that same stuff, and was very much like, I. Lo- he was very much into guns and motorcycles. Uh, but it, it's crazy because because no one knows or remembers his name. But he was friends with like he was that he was the crazy right wing friend of all those guys of Coppola and uh, and Lucas and Spielberg. Like he was their friend, but was just the like one that was different politically, one sort one. of. You know what I mean? Like they all like when they wanted dialogue help, they called him. Yeah, he's he writes. St- in fact, in the documentary, like one of the fir- in the first like two minutes, Sam Elliott's like he doesn't write for me- or he's like he doesn't write for women and he doesn't write for pussies. He says something like that where he's like he writes dialogue for men, not for pussies, and it's just really funny. Uh, <laughs> the weird thing though about Dirty Harry is that the the, the bad guy in the seems to think he's in an Italian horror movie. Because okay. he's like, he's hamming it up 120%. That does not surprise me. That does not surprise <laughs> me at all. Uh, yeah, I need to I need to check out more of his movies. Because I haven't seen it. I, I, it's been a long time since I saw any of the Conan movies. Because um, he did those. And it's been a long time since I saw... Like, he did Red Dawn. Uh, uh, and, but he also wrote Apocalypse Now. Um, which is fantastic. Um, yes. Uh, so I'm trying to think. There's there's a handful of things. Uh, and then David, you're familiar with David Milch, right? Uh, where am I? 
De- Deadwood and John and John from Cincinnati and uh, Rome. The show Deadwood? You know the show Deadwood. I know the show Deadwood. I'm okay. Trying to remember the person. Uh, you wouldn't know. I, w- I wouldn't even recognize his face, but I just know that I just know him as a creative person. It was because okay. it was either because he was talking about how I don't know if it was him that did Ro- that show Rome. Do you remember that? It was either Milius or Milch that did that show, and one of them borrowed like a million dollars from the other. And I think it was it might have been John Milius borrowed from David Milch, and uh, Milch was like. That's the only motherfucker that's ever borrowed money from me and paid it all back, like, when they said they were going to. <laughs> like, uh, and there was another funny thing where it was, like, uh, when John Millis, when they were in film school together, because they were all in, like, USC or UCLA or wherever the hell they were all at film school, uh, um, they, some teacher wasn't going to let one of the students' films play. I don't know what reason it was for. But it wasn't even his film. He didn't have anything to do with it. I, I think he also didn't even get along with the filmmaker. But John Milius was so offended that the teacher wasn't going to let the student play his film that he punched the teacher out in the face. <laughs> like, I think that's so hilarious that he was just like... Uh, I don't know. It's just really funny to me to punch a teacher in the face because you won't let one of the other students play their film. Ooh, Kyle Schwarber strikes out. Something like that. Or maybe punch him in the stomach. But it's... The documentary is way interesting. Uh, Yes. Hold on. I'll need to look up what... I feel like I'm missing some things that he did as well. But... And he was gonna make... He had like a stroke probably a decade ago because he was gonna make a new uh, a Conan movie, I think. I've never, have you ever seen The Wind and the Lion? Is that a Sean Connery movie? No, never mind. It is a Sean Connery movie. The Wind and the Lion, he did. It's Sean Connery, Candace Bergen, John Huston, Ryan Keith. I switched the the, the, na- the billing order there. Uh,. I might have to check that out. He might be a knight. I think Sean Connery is a knight in that. Loosely based on the the real life uh, Perdicus Perdicaris incident. The Perdicaris incident? I don't know what that is. The kidnapping of Greek American playboy Ian John Hanford Perdicaris and his stepson. Okay. Interesting. I kind of want to see that now. Uh... Yeah, and he did Rome, too, if you ever watched Rome on, on HBO. Full count. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of those shows that a lot of people talk about. Yeah. I have very mixed feelings about that. I don't think it's a great show, but I like I sort of like it. I remember trying to watch it once, and I didn't much care for it, and yeah, then I, that, I think I got back into good. it. But, uh... Yeah, like, there's not nearly enough gay sex in this, yes. uh, Senate. Yeah. What's happening? Yes, there's exactly. It's, the amount of homoeroticism was not historically accurate for my liking. No, uh... <laughs> you were there with all your ancient clay pots just yes. ready to watch? Yes. He wrote... He also... He wrote Jeremiah Johnson. Well, he wrote Magnum Force. He wrote... There was an evil... There was a movie called Evil Knievel, apparently. He wrote that. Uh, he wrote Dillinger. He's uncredited for the Jaws thing, but he wrote that speech at least. Um, uh, Apocalypse Now. It's always interesting when that kind of stuff happens. Like, do you ever follow all of that stuff about, uh, about Poltergeist? How some people think Spielberg ghost directed it? Oh, uh, I thought he, yeah, he did direct it though, didn't he? Who directed it? Uh, did he it not? Was the guy who directed Texas Chainsaw Massacre what? is the credited director. Really? But, but, but people say that he was like terrible, and Spielberg was the producer. And so to, like, I thought he was the director. The film, they say he, he sort of fixed it up. Oh, directed it. yeah, it says Toby Hooper, and it was ri- and it was written by Spielberg. So it would not surprise me, especially since he wrote it. Uh, if he very much was like no, like yeah, you're fucking it up. Like yes. Um, <laughs> I heard a similar thing about Gone Girl with uh, that Ben Affleck, that David Fincher maybe just didn't care about it, and that Ben Affleck was, like, very much, uh, 
Which would make sense because Ben Affleck obviously has a lot of input as the star of anything now, especially now that he is a filmmaker. So I had heard that he kind of uh, had somewhat taken over. I still haven't seen Argo. It's okay. It's not as good as uh, everyone was making it out to be, but it was fun. Dan Winkler gets strikeout, so there's either one or two outs now in the ninth. Um, he also had he wrote he helped write the story John Mellius did for 1941. If you ever saw that, are you familiar with 1941? Uh, not oh, really? The Spielberg movie that was like not well received. It was like a huge comedy. It had like Belushi and Aykroyd and uh, God. It had so Ralph Macchio and. Uh, Look it up. It's insane. It's like every famous person from like 1984. Like, uh, or wait, let's see. One and one. Or 79. So it's from 79. So I guess Mount. God, is Machio in that? He, he had to have been even younger then. Hold on. Now I need to look at the cast. Here. Uh, I mean, Ralph Machio has always looked so 15 years old. So here. Oh, what else? Can I get him out at first? He does by a step. Uh, okay, listen to this. Uh, this is I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm kind of picking the names that, that stand out here because uh, there's a whole bunch but Dan Aykroyd, Ned ba- Beatty John Belushi, Christopher Lee Tim Matheson Toshiro Muf- Mufune I don't know, I think he's the uh, he's, one, he's one of the because one of the storylines is the, is the Japanese submarine and I'm pretty sure George Takei I thought George Takei was like the lead, like the the admiral of the submarine, but maybe not because he's not Woo. even listed. Now, now I'm just gonna feel racist if it's somebody else completely. That is that. Um, uh, Robert Stack, uh, da, 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 da. Slim Pickens, uh, yeah. But it's all star cast. Yeah. I believe Slim Pickens was free. John Candy, uh, Mickey Rourke. Um, John Landis, uh, James Kahn. He says he's listed as a fighting sailor, uncredited. Uh, Penny Marshall. Yeah, I mean that's a ton of people in it, but it apparently, let's see what the ratings are. Let's see what the reception is on on Rotten Tomato. I'm actually, it's a 42 percent on Rotten Tomato. Stuff in the forty to sixty percent. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, the like, Cubs like, win. Like, uh, Cubs win. Weapon four is around that, and it's rated lower than three, but it's way better than three. Yeah, it's been a while it. since I saw either. Uh, like, <laughs> but it's uh, like three has just awful, awful dialogue. Yeah. Just. Terrible. Did Shane Black write the third one? That's what I was wondering. I don't know if he did. Or if he It'd be interesting to look at that. Yeah. Well, and also, it was P- wasn't it PG-13? I feel like that was a money grab. Because the first two are R, for sure, right? And then either the third or the fourth one, one of those I'm pretty sure is PG-13. If not both. Three hours and 33 minutes. Also, are you familiar with the... Did you watch the 80s Twilight Zone? We remind you uh, I've please. seen some of it. Are you familiar with the one called Opening Day, which has... Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, some John Millius directed an episode of Twilight Zone. That's all I was getting at there, of the 80s Twilight Zone. But, ooh, he also maybe... He directed... Did you, I didn't know this. Did you ever see the uh, the mini series from the '90s of the Rough Riders with Re- like Roosevelt, like on TNT no. on TNT, uh, like the Spanish American Civil War or Spanish American War? I've not seen that. Well, anyway, he directed that, and it sounds that's such a him thing to do is like an imperialism uh, American thing, but it's got it's Tom Berenger, Scott Elliott, Gary Busey. Uh, so, yeah. Gary Busey, another Lethal Weapon yep. guy. Yeah. Wait, he's in, Gary Busey's in Lethal Weapon? 
Yeah, I think he's the, he's like the main henchman in. The oh, first in one. the first one, is he the? Who, I, think, I think he's the guy who he does the big punch out with at the end of that. Okay. Movie, which is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. By the way. Is is okay. is, he, is he who lights his finger on fire at the beginning just to like be like I'm so tough I can just light my finger. Maybe. I, I, yeah, that makes sense. But by the way, isn't aren't the first two lethal like, and especially the second one? And I'm not. Maybe I'm just saying that because I love the. I'm very attracted to the South African uh, love love uh, love story. What's the word I'm looking for? Interest. Love interest. interest. Yeah. She's very attractive. <laughs> but. Uh, so I was looking up t- like because you remember the TV company Zenith, right? Uh, no, really. Okay, so you're just that must be just the the barely because I'm what four years older than you? Are you thirty? I'm thirty. Yes. Okay, so I'm like four or five years older than you. Um, but there was a co- TV company called Zenith, and we I had a Zenith. We had a Zenith to, like uh, it was like that weird transitional stage where TVs were still in like wood casings. You know what I mean? <laughs> But they weren't as big as they used to be. They were in, like, 50-pound wood casings instead of 100-pound wood casings. Um, but I was just like, what happened? I think LG bought them is what someone said. But I was just like, what happened to those? But I, I Googled Zenith Company t-shirts, and in, like, the second row of pictures is a thing of Lola Bunny bent over across Bugs Bunny's laps with her panties down and, oh, and, yeah. and them That's looking at each other. Image. Is it? Okay. And it's like her at, and it's of him about to smack her ass, but her ass is so red where you can tell it's like the hundredth time he's done it recently. Yeah. 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 I'm very confused about what, what of the Google search of Zenith Company t-shirts it would have that be like the tenth image come up. I, I just don't, I don't get oh, it. And, uh, like, like I told you, uh watch uh, Space Jam and it's good. See, okay. My sister had just messaged me about watching Space Jam and she was like, it's fucking insane. Like, she was saying it's just crazy. Um, it's, uh, I mean, not, uh, like, Michael Jordan can't act with yeah. Jam, well, but, yeah, but his sure. charisma and the fact that there's a bunch of animated cartoon characters around him carries him through that. Yeah. I think I might like it now. I wish I uh, I wish I still smoked Although maybe I don't know. I remember seeing it in the theater and not liking it very much. And it was made, I think, for like exactly my age when it came out. <laughs> like I had to have been like what mid like ninety five, ninety six. Like when did that come out? Uh, yeah, it would have been around ninety five. So I had to I have been know. like the almost perfect, unless I was maybe too old, slightly too old for it. I don't know. Ninety six. So I would have been twelve years old. Um. But I remember not liking it very much. I remember being very indifferent towards it. Uh, yeah. But I know a lot of people love it and, like, like it a lot. And there's been rumors that LeBron is going to make one, which I'd be interested to see how that goes. Um, yeah. I like yeah, LeBron. I do think Jordan's probably the best <clears throat> player of all time. Uh, I think LeBron's a better human being. <laughs> um, like... <laughs> He like like Jordan was always betting l- extremely large sums of money on things, whereas LeBron's like, hey, I'll pay for college for everybody that went to the high school I went to, like things like that. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that like you can't do with your money whatever you want to do. Ooh, someone's commenting on that. Wayne Knight is the only live actor who doesn't play himself, and it bothers. And Nancy says Wayne Knight's the only person who doesn't play Wayne Knight, and it bothers him them <laughs> that's fair i remember seeing that and being like bill murray gets to be bill murray like uh uh jordan gets to be jordan how come they, they can't just have him be is he the agent is he mike's agent yeah, he's like uh he's or uh, assistant he works on the team on the baseball team that jordan's playing okay for, and he's like in charge of making keeping jordan happy basically he's like his handler i feel like you could still sort of make him that and let him still be wayne knight couldn't you couldn't he say that Seinfeld's on a hiatus or something? Like, I don't know. But yeah, so old Wayne Knight. It'll be interesting to see if Shane Black gets to make a uh, 
Seinfeld doesn't exist in the Looney Tunes uh, world. We'll call it the universe. We'll call it the Tuniverse, Nancy. The Looney Tuniverse. Uh, t- um, oh, I was going to say a thing, and now I can't remember what the thing was. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, they were supposed to... They've talked about making a Lethal Weapon 5, and like I said, he wanted to make it more what he wanted for the third one. And, uh, and I think he was talking about how originally, because they were going to have their kids be, like, have, like, their offspring be in it as characters. But I think he wanted to make it, like, he didn't want it to be, like, a handing off the reins, I don't think. I think he was just like, no, I want it to be, like, a back and, like, even screen time. i okay things about the, the TV series. Uh, I've heard that the, didn't they, they fired the guy who was M- M- Mel Brooks's, Mel Brooks, Mel Gibson's, Mel, Mel Gibson's character. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yes. <laughs> oh. Nice. I would watch that. <laughs> I would watch Mel Brooks in a buddy cop comedy movie. These explosions don't like it. <laughs> oh, see. <laughs> but, yeah. but. Mean, it also has, has one of the Wayans, right? Yeah, it's Damon Wayans. Plays yeah. the old... It's crazy that his son is as old as he is. Because I remember seeing his son in the, like, nine years ago in the, the other guys. Uh, and being like, holy shit, Damon Waynes has a son that's that old? Like, that's that old? Because his son's probably older than me. But, uh, yeah, they had some issues, apparently, uh, where the guy on set... Uh, uh, yeah, the white the white Southern dude w- was he was yelling a lot. What I don't get is when to uh, to me, um, artistically, it should be okay to yell at, at each other. Like when you're like, like when you're making a thing that's worth millions of dollars and has millions of dollars of budgets. Like you should care about what you're doing and yell like and when you're being artistic and it's emotional and like when you're at, I don't know. I feel yeah, like, like that, uh, the, the Christian Bale rant. Yeah. Where people are like uh, in the industry are like, oh no, that white guy was fucking up. Like, yeah. He wasn't doing his job. Yes, and he's like, and it's like if he's in the shot, the shot's fucking done. It's like you'd you'd rather like because you can't use the shot if the fucking light guy's in the frame. So you just keep the light the way it is and hope that it maybe can be fixed in post. Or wait till the wait till the shot wait till he gets through a take and then do it. I don't know. But uh yeah, I feel like uh I don't know. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I don't know. I have very mixed feelings about when people are like, they were mean or they're meh. uh on the on on this other side of the token, I hear Ellen is very mean to her writing staff. <laughs> Also, Co- Conan doesn't seem very nice to his writing staff either. He seems pretty... I mean, what we see on camera is kind of, like, mean half the time, so... Like, when he was, like, giving Charlie... In that documentary when Conan is, like, giving pretty hard Charlie horses to some of his writing staff, I was like, that's not... That's not great. I mean, if they've known each other for decades... Sure. That's their thing. Sure. But, uh, yeah. No, and I, I mean, like I said, I'd love Conan. I would love to be abused by Conan, like, for a while. <laughs> Is that why every time you're going out with somebody, you call them Conan Daddy? Yeah, Conan Daddy. Conan Daddy. I call him Sea Dad. Sea Daddy. I say it's an ocean thing, but really, it's it's about Conan. I dated Aquaman, and I called him Sea Daddy, but he didn't. he thought it was because of who he is. But it was really because of Conan. Which, by the way, I'm about to start the second season, I believe, of Harley Quinn. Yeah, it's good. Keeps up the quality. Nancy says, so when a man shouts, it's okay. But when Ellen apologizes for a war for a work, work criminal, it's too far, in quotations. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I didn't realize how many people still vehemently hate uh, George W. Bush until that photo came out with Ellen. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of people hate all the presidents that have existed. <laughs> except Carter. I think, I think, I think 
up until I totally understand hating every single president except Jimmy, going all the way back to Jimmy Carter. And then before him, almost everyone before that. <laughs> like, I totally get everyone has reasons to hate almost every president that's ever existed. Yeah, I mean, most of the presidents, they uh, they stop and then they spend their retirement giving expensive talks at banks. Yeah. But Jimmy Carter spends all building his time houses. building houses for people. But here's, you know, like, here's what I'm wondering. Does, does he have a guilty conscience? You know what I mean? Did he do one real bad thing, maybe, and he feels really bad about it? So he's, so he's like, I have to build houses for poor people until I die. Because he's like, they're like showing. Also, to be fair... Would you want a house built by a 95-year-old? Like, I, I don't know if I trust the, the, the workmanship that's going in to those anymore. Uh, Nancy also yeah, says, Nancy Scooby-Doo Scott can do-do, do, but Jimmy Carter is smarter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, a Simpsons reference. <laughs> I was just watching an episode the other day where, uh, where their homer starts a bowling team. <laughs> and I love that. The Pin Pals? <laughs> there's a... There's a there's a janitor working at the power plant whose name is Pops Freshenmeyer. <laughs> I did not know that. Wait, is this <laughs> is this the one with the pin pals or is this a completely yes, different this one? Is the pin pals. Okay. Nice. Well, I'll get that Harvard diploma. <laughs> yeah. As soon as I get that lobster harmonica. <laughs> he tries to do the Bo tries to do the uh, who who was it? Is it Tanya? Tanya something who tried to. Assault the other Olympic athlete. Oh, Tanya Harding. She did. Yeah, uh, she Tanya did. Harding. She hired. Or well, her boyfriend hired a yeah, idiot. Yeah, yeah. Mo tries to do that to Mr. Burns. <laughs> oh yeah, and doesn't he pop it back into place? It's like he's yeah. already hurt, and it like pops his joint back into place. I think my favorite uh, Mo moment ever is probably when they call when Lisa calls Mo, and she's like, "Mo, we know what you're doing. Knock it off." And he's like, "All right, all right, all right, okay." And then he goes, "All right, guys, we gotta get these pandas or whatever it is where he has all those pandas." <laughs> That's maybe my favorite uh, Mo part ever. That or when he and this uh, uh, definitely uh, of the newer. When I say newer, I mean the last 17 years of Simpsons. Uh, when he has his head in the oven with the sign that says no funeral on the back that's one of the most ingenious like that's so funny in the most har- in the most harsh way the, that's the Cape Fear episode? okay I didn't know that was the Cape Fear episode the one with the pandas yeah, yeah, because uh, they think it's maybe Mo. That's writing threatening letters yeah. to Bart. They're trying to figure out. They think it's Mo. Yeah, so. we know what you're doing, so knock it off. Oh, uh, anyway, Gerald, thank you for joining, Gerald. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna uh, write some stuff for Sea Dogs, and we should we should do yeah. do that if you're Who down. What? Who won the game? The Cubs won seven to four. They scored oh. seven. They scored literally all their runs in the eighth inning. And uh, Hernan Perez, who I gave this first start since bringing him up from the minors, was the player of the game with two doubles, an RBI, and a run. Uh, So that was good. Alec Mills with the win. Archie Bradley with the loss. And Dan Winkler with the save. Dan Winkler, perfect on save opportunities, I believe. He has, like, at least probably 12 saves. And I think he's uh, every time he's been brought in to get a save, he has gotten a, a save. I think so. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, Gerald. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Nancy, for being this nice little three-way. This nice little three-way we got going. Uh, Ooh, I know it's a cyber. Beard on beard on beard action. Uh, I actually shaved. Oh, so now you're the twink. I yes. That's all. That's all that was stopping me. I'm a little. Tw- I'm a little. I can't even say that with a straight face. I mean, I guess no twink. Yeah, you know, straight face. Uh. But uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah. Uh, I, I will. We'll, I'll, I'll message you here, and we'll get some some stuff going for for writing, and uh, I'll talk to all y'all later. Thank you, Gerald. Yep. Bye bye. Well, that was the game. What a what an eighth inning for the Cubs, huh? Uh, seven runs in the eighth to make it uh, the win, and then they gave up two in the eighth 
uh, to make it close, but they won. They won. What a strange game. I certainly uh, was expecting more runs to come in the later innings since uh, obviously with the fact that Madison Bumgarner and you Darvish were both pitching very well. Um, but the problem is Madison, Madison got hurt. Uh, Darvish uh, started giving up some runners and also had, he threw about 100 pitches. Uh, but yeah, so the Cubs... I think have won five in a row now. Uh, they take the first one away from the Diamondbacks of a four ser four game series. Hopefully, let's see on Thursday. Yeah, they 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 have to play five or six more games in a row. So, geez, they have a whole bunch of days where they uh. Good question. I'll look at that right now. Oh, the Cubs and the Reds are tied. Uh, but the Cubs have one more win, but also one more loss. Uh, strangely enough, you would usually, I think, put the team that has the higher winning percentage on top, I thought. But I'm okay with this. Um, so it's a tie for the first place with the Reds and the Cubs. Uh, next closest is the Cardinals with a sub-500. So the, the NL Central, which should have been... Yeah, the Reds have been on fire. Uh, red hot, you could say. Um, but this, this, uh, the real Central will be more competitive than this. I think those four teams are all going to be battling it out. I mean, I guess, actually, I take that back as they're talking like the divisions might not be the regular divisions. Uh, they might go spring training divisions. They might go geographically and clump uh, geographic areas together in divisions. So who knows? I know the red starting rotation is going to, should be, has the potential to be really, 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 really good. Really, 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 really good. Um, yeah. Anyway, thanks for being here. I'll post this on YouTube in a bit. I'll see you tomorrow. All have a good one.